Billionaire Charlie Munger said something recently that upset a few people, so I wanted to see what caused the uproar. Is this billionaire out of touch, or is he speaking facts? We'll find out right now. Stop complaining, says billionaire investor Charlie Munger. Everybody's five times better off than they used to be. Charlie Munger is Warren Buffett's right-hand man as he serves as vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway and a verified billionaire with a net worth of over $2 billion. No one knows his crypto holdings, so his net worth could be double for all we know. Well, I certainly didn't invest in crypto. <laughs> I'm proud of the fact I've avoided it. It's like, you know, some venereal disease or something. I just regard it as beneath contempt. Okay, maybe he doesn't own any crypto, but he does own exciting businesses like the Daily Journal Corporation and Costco. A relevant fact that will get brought up later is a passage from Wikipedia about Munger. When he applied to his father's alma mater, Harvard Law School, the dean of admissions rejected him because Munger had not completed an undergraduate degree. However, the dean relented after a call from Roscoe Pound, the former dean of Harvard Law and a Munger family friend. As many point out in the comment section on a Reddit post, Munger certainly didn't have the same upbringing as the people he's criticizing in some respects. Munger allegedly thrived in Harvard Law School, began his career working in a law firm, and eventually founded Munger, Tolls, and Olson LLP in 1962, working as a real estate attorney. People are less happy about the state of affairs than they were when things were way tougher. Because Munger was born in 1924, he has lived through a lot of the atrocities we've been through as a country, and therefore his quote about life being better holds merit. He was alive during the Great Depression and crypto. That's pretty remarkable. His dad was a lawyer and his grandfather a politician. Something tells me his upbringing was a little more stable than most people during those quote-unquote hard times. In response to someone mentioning that he was born into a rich family and made it into law school because of his family's connections, even though he didn't have a degree, someone replied, WTF, I didn't know that was an option. Option, with another poster responding that everything's an option if you're rich enough. As you can imagine, a 98-year-old billionaire saying to stop complaining hasn't gone over well within certain subcultures on social media and Reddit. Everybody's five times better off than they used to be. With inflation feeling higher than ever, interest rates rising, housing being unaffordable, world wars, and the cost of a dozen eggs being more than the boomer's cost of a college education, are people really better off? The basic needs are pretty well filled. While he may be right from an empirical evidence standpoint, why do people feel that he's wrong? Let's do a quick breakdown. Can the average person afford a home in 2023? For most Americans, owning a home is now a distant dream. According to Zillow, there are now 481 cities nationwide in which the typical home value is at least $1 million and almost half are in California. While that stat is slightly misleading because of how ridiculously priced California and New York are, the two news headlines I just shared are representative of the feeling many Americans have. Unfortunately, the middle class class dream of home ownership has been fading away, Redfin chief economist Daryl Fairweather told CBS Money Watch. Owning a home in the U.S., she said, is a signifier of the upper class now. One of the most important benefits to living in America is the idea of owning your home in the upward trajectory that comes with home ownership equity. FRED is the Federal Reserve of Economic Data. This chart represents the home ownership rate in the United States since about 1960. It appears that more people today own homes than 60 years ago. That chart indicates that more people, by a few percentage points owned homes right before the Great Recession, but more today than past generations. But Spencer, that can't be true because the news tells me that no one can afford a home now. This chart represents the historical median monthly rents, which has clearly skyrocketed through every generation. Did anyone else notice that rental rates have never experienced a dip? Housing has, the stock market has, the car market has, crypto has, NFTs have, but rental rates have not. Hmm, I wonder if that's why I tell everyone to invest in real estate. From 1985 to 2020, rent prices increased 149% while income grew just 35%. If rent prices grew at the same rate as income since 2000, the median rent in 2020 would cost about 34% less. The rent to income ratio is 89% higher for millennials than it was for baby boomers at the same age in 1985. Well, now I think we're getting somewhere. This might be why many people are complaining that Munger is not accurate in his claim that today's era is five times better than before. Considering how important housing is to our day-to-day -day life, millennials and the younger generations experiencing a far more challenging housing rental market is likely to lead to more of a belief that life is more difficult. As of July 2022, the 50 largest metro areas have a median rent of over $1,800, with the average income somewhere around $60,000 to $80,000 a year in the biggest metro areas of the U.S. That doesn't leave much left over after rent and taxes. Because the rent-to-income ratio has never been worse, I do believe the younger generations have something 
nothing to complain about, says the man with a personal vanity project to make college students live in a windowless shoebox. Munger has infamously been involved in a dorm project at the University of California, Santa Barbara, that involves rooms without windows. Please walk us through this decision. I guess this is in, in regards to your design for for student housing well, with no windows. Air. On the surface, I can see why plenty of people on Reddit have criticized Munger for his terrible design of this dorm for students. Nobody in his right mind would prefer a blank wall in a bedroom to a ball with a window in it. The reason you take the windows out is you're getting something else from the design considered as a whole. Charlie Munger might not get his windowless dorm built at UC Santa Barbara after 13 people said it could pose health risks. The 200-page report includes references to prison dozens of times when talking of the dorm. Similarly, if you want a bunch of people who are educating each other to, to be conveniently close to one another, you get a shortage of windows. The report draws from a five-month review that included a look at Munger Hall's building prototypes, conversations with those in charge of the project, surveys filled out by faculty and students, academic literature, and faculty expertise. If you read through any Reddit post involving Munger, you'll see countless comments about how much of an idiot he was for architecting a dorm without any windows. And in exchange, you get a whole lot of people who are getting a lot of advantage from being near one another and they have to do without a real window in the bedroom. I'm confident people on Reddit are more intelligent than Munger, but after hearing him discuss this, I decided to look further into his designs. Uh, the building is meant to house 4,500 students. That's a pretty large building. And take a look at the layout on the inside crammed full of these um, little suites, as they are called. Everyone seems to be piling on Munger for his decision, but I still felt like there was more to this story. Again, I, I don't know a lot about architecture. Uh, I, I don't really even know whether this would be a good or bad design. Seems bad to me, but this is kind of a glimpse of, of what it means to have a society and world. Somehow a man donating $200 million to fund a student housing dorm for what I believe is more affordable housing is now seen as the bad guy. No one is above criticism, and it does appear that Charlie may be attempting something outside of his scope of expertise, but I still felt like something was missing from the story. I have built a dorm just like this at the University of Michigan with no windows and no windows in the bedrooms at all. Everybody loves it. They fight to get in. What I'm building here is way better than what's done in Michigan. Munger graduate residences are dorms located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and maintain a 4.4 star review out of 5 on Google. And on an apartment rating website, they maintain an 8.2 out of 10 rating that's considered great on their website, even though they mention that most of the apartments are windowless. I'm certainly not an architect, and the UCSB report is probably pretty accurate, but I did find it interesting how Munger's idea has already been implemented to great success, and yet he's being labeled an idiot for his plans. The dorm resign in disgust calling the project, quote, unsupportable from my perspective as an architect, a parent, and a human being. I think much of the disdain thrown at billionaires is the working class's feeling that the potential to rise within the socioeconomic classes of America is dwindling fast. Many Americans right now are being hit hard by the inflation crisis and rise in rental rates. Despite everything else in America being arguably better than in times past, I'd argue that these two factors are the biggest reason why I believe the massive turmoil exists. The fact that everybody's five times better off than they used to be, they take it for granted. All they think about is somebody else has having more now, and it's not fair that he should have it and they don't. This is the quote that set Reddit afire. I certainly agree that living in 2023 is significantly better than any generation before, but it's important that we stick to data before we reach a conclusion. Many people face the news each morning with trepidation and dread. Every day we read of shootings, inequality, pollution, dictatorship, war, and the spread of nuclear weapons. In many of Steven Pinker's presentations, he breaks down the impact the media has on the minds of America and why the belief that America is worse off today than ever before is unfounded and about as accurate as my tee shots that end up in a fairway bunker. With all this enormous increase in living standards and f freedom and diminishment of racial inequities and all the huge progress that has come, People are less happy about the state of affairs than they were when things were way tougher. 
I personally believe on Americans' opinion on how good or bad modern times are are directly related to what news they consume. Let me give you a thought experiment. If you forced someone to only watch Fox News or CNN all day, and you forced another person to never consume news from mainstream media or social media, who do you think would have a more positive outlook on life? In both cases, nothing actually changes about the world around them, only their perception. As it gets better and better, people are less and less satisfied. That is weird, but that's what's happened. Steven Pinker's speech was pretty eye-opening as he relied on data to prove his point that today's era is better in every meaningful metric than generations before. Life expectancy has experienced a significant increase across continents. Child mortality is down significantly across generations. Famine deaths are down significantly across generations. Extreme poverty is down significantly across generations. I won't bore you with every chart he presents, and I'd recommend watching his videos if you're interested in the topic, but the point is that nearly every data point relating to quality of life signifies that we are living in an era significantly better than any era before. So why then does a post about Charlie Munger stating a quote that is pretty hard to argue get so much traction? I think it's because Americans are facing a significant increase in rent, the price of consumer goods, their grocery bill, childcare, a messy healthcare system, staying at jobs they dislike simply because their employer's health insurance is adequate, the inability to buy a home, the list goes on and on. And I don't think they're necessarily wrong to have the beliefs they do. While I can present all the data in the world representing this era as having the highest standard of living, it won't help those commenters from changing the feelings they have towards the reality they currently exist within. And in 1930, y'all had it better than those in 1390, but you still complained then, didn't you? It's not wrong to chime in when stuff isn't right across the board. I think this is a valid claim. There's nothing wrong with complaining about modern society, demanding that we improve in every area. A lot of people are struggling, and they see a billionaire tell them to stop complaining because life is great. Of course they're going to push back. And then it doesn't help when they see this on social media. If, if I made 400 grand a year, I would be embarrassed with myself as a husband, a father, basically as a human being. 400 grand, how do you make sense of $35,000 a month. You guys haven't done the math. You have not done the math because you cannot live on 400 grand a year. I don't care for videos like these because I don't think it's beneficial to anyone and certainly don't believe it to be true, but it's easy to see why people in the lower income tiers are growing more angry towards those who have significant amounts of wealth. And that has a very simple explanation. The world is not driven by greed, it's driven by envy. I think this is why guys like Grant Cardone sell so well. He knows how to speak to a group of people on social media who are envious of his financial success and materialistic possessions and hand over their money to him. The standard of living in 2023 has never been higher, and I believe Charlie Munger is right when he says that this era is better than any other era in human history. But I also think there are certain elements of life that are more challenging to those who lack resources, and I can understand why a billionaire, who appears to have come from a spoiled childhood, saying to stop complaining doesn't sit well with the audience. Full disclosure, I think wealth inequality is an urgent problem that America needs to solve. How do we do it? By not complaining. Just kidding. Thanks for watching.